All right, well, welcome everyone to the channel. I'm glad to say we finally got that walnut tree cut down by the power lines that I've been talking about. Uh, Keith brought his back over and he was able to push it and it fell exactly where we wanted it. And basically anywhere but where the power lines were, but actually we were able to push it right where we wanted to push it. And, uh, and he was able to dig down a little bit to get a little extra from this stump, which was about four feet, but we were able to get, a, <clears throat> excuse me, an extra foot out of it. So. We got about a five foot log here. Uh, I forgot, once again, I left my tape measure over at the kiln, but uh, I'll have to go get it to measure to get the full legs. But I think this end at the crotch, and I'll throw some water on it because I already took a top cut off it. So I'll put some water on it to show you the figure and what we're getting into. And we still got 19 inches of log to be able to cut down. And I think I'm going to do 11 quarter. I've been wrestling between 11 and 10 quarter. I definitely don't want to do 12 quarter because it's only being a five foot log. I don't think it needs to be three inches thick, but I've been wrestling between two and a half to two and three quarter. And I think I may just go two and three quarter, which is 11 quarter. And, uh, and so I'll show you that, but we're going to cut that and I can go over here and show you the rest of this tree. Here we go we got this piece which is going to be interesting with with this uh, branch coming off and then this crotch figure and might cut it off right there I'm not sure I'd have to measure maybe I can get a leave a little a little bit out of that far piece but that's going to be a nice piece with figure here's a another branch that was the first branch I was able to get to when I climbed up it and cut that off and this is where I started running into trouble climbing a tree this is going to be a nice log it's got an s in it but it's got these little knots or I'm, i don't even know what in the world you call those and then you got this knot and over here and it's got a little it might even have a little twist to it and so this should be a pretty interesting log you can see there's not a there's a little bit of sapwood but not a lot and it's a solid log it was a dead tree but when i was climbing it and coming up to this s as you can see it and this thing was surrounded with vines i just it was getting a little too squirrely for me and i was getting a little nervous of continuing on especially we had to climb up uh 12 14 feet to get to this point and uh but then i talked to my friend keith who i work with he has a rocking company that i i help him and and uh he said that he should be able to easily push it over which he did and so i was thankful for that so we have this piece and here's a another uh this one's a 12 foot log it's got a little uh, hole in the center there so we'll see, it'll be interesting to get into this i think this is about 20 inch to 22 inch diameter and uh here's some of the ash logs this, that i was talking about and which is about 40 inch diameter on this far end and so we're gonna have to cut that narrow that down a little bit and even on this end got some interesting crotch but it's also gonna be too wide but uh but here's the uh the walnut i gotta get this little piece off i was using for the camera but i'm gonna throw some water on this and have you take a look this is what it looks like with that any water but let me get some water on it. Not sure how the figure's coming out with this lighting, but 
it's got some nice swirls and I mean this whole log is just like a crotch figure and a stump and so I want to get to the other end without hurting myself get another angle I'm gonna walk on the tracks it's always fun to walk on the tracks let me see it's always it's all fun and games until it's not but check out that I mean this is just the first cut And I think it's going to be beautiful. Where it's still making some flat cuts. Uh, it's getting to the end. I'm kind of a little nervous with doing this walnut, but I don't want to put a fresh blade on yet. So I'm going to make one more cut, and then I'm just going to, as, as I do the cuts, then I'm going to just keep checking to see how as long as there's no waves in it, I'll keep going, or else I may have to stop and get a new blade. But I'm going to do some more cutting here. What did I say? 11 and three quarter. And I'm glad you can hear you. I'm glad you guys are here to join us. And uh, enjoy the video. Remember, walnuts are good for parasites. The inner bark. You would scrape off some of this inner bark here. Like right here, this, this inner bark is is what you really want to use you could also use the uh the hulls of the walnut they're, you know they're green when they fall but then they turn brown but you also dry some of the hulls or this inner bark is is what you want to do medicinally you would dry this let me turn that a little bit you would dry this and uh store it and you could use it for i really don't know how <laughs> a walnut tea but you can mix it with cloves and also wormwood and it's just it's great for parasites as i said before and that's good to know especially because parasites can drag you down a little bit but anyways let's get started here i know everybody loves t talking about medicinal values but let me make sure that we're tracking right i don't like We don't want the blade jumping the band wheels. Now, now before I get, now before I get started, we had a comment on someone talking about we got the log lifters on the wrong side of the sawmill and i totally wholeheartedly agree to that the issue was really you know i'm not the smartest and the sharpest blade in the in the in the box i don't even know how that saying goes that's how sharp i am but the, the way we put the sawmill together is how they designed it and put it in the direction. And even on a commercial, if you would ever watch the commercial Master of Get Her Done, which is a commercial that Nerwood has with the sawmill, you'll notice the guy uh, operating on this side of it, but he's got it all hydraulics. We have everything hydraulics except for maneuvering the sawmill up and down. We got to manually move the sawmill up and down the tracks he has it remote control or through hydraulics but he has a log lifter on this side and the log rests on that side and that's how we build it plus during the directions we also did everything according to the directions but we ran into an issue when you put the log bunks on they got holes here put the log bunks on you we got for the log rest they got holes for the log rest right here and uh let's see my hand they got the log wrist right here the holes but they don't they only have it on one side of the bunks and we put the bunks on according to the directions and we put the log wrist the only place you could put them on and when it comes to the last thing we put on was the log lifter and we had an issue of if we put it on the operator side which is how they even have the commercial I would have an issue of as I come back and as I come back and forth with the sawmill 
I would have to step over this log rest every time. Now, I could probably deal with that. My concern is bringing it back. I would be, especially with filming and, and you know, you got your mind on three, four different things. And if I'm in a hurry and I'm stepping, I'm tired in this 90, 100 degree heat and I just come back too fast and I trip over it, well, I can fall backwards and my head can hit the other one or whatnot. And, you know, the older I get, the more clumsy I get. So we totally opt out for putting the log lifters on this side because I don't want to trip over them so we had to put them on that side and when we talked to them they said well you can use the log dogs and even the log turner to help stop it but you know they were claiming you know with their design is the issue they were having is when they put the manual together it was during covid and they couldn't get everybody in the same room together and even with the designs so when it comes to the log lifters, there is needing a modification. However, if you're going to buy this machine and you're not going to get the hydraulics to manually move the mill up and down, I would strongly suggest to take this note of having these bunks to make sure that the holes on the bunks are on the operator side. And then once you can do that, you'll be able to put the bunks or the log rest on the operator side and you'll be able to put the log lifter on the opposite side and you won't have a problem but that piece of knowledge didn't come to us till after we put the whole thing together and yes we could take it apart and switch things around but after spending two and a half weeks putting this together and working with this kiln and everything else i'm not doing it at this point we're just going to deal with it and so that's why and i think i shared this earlier on in my videos and you just keep moving on thinking it's common knowledge well it's not common knowledge and so anytime there's a question of why is our log lifters on the wrong side it's because of the way it was designed and you know we're we we in 2020 hindsight we're, we're finding out the modifications that it need these log lifters there you know we had to also modify it because it was the logs were coming into the gap between the track and the log bunks and we had to put a modification of a board and something to be able to allow the log to roll on but that's even an issue because you got to put them on every time that you use them but then you got to take them off because it's going to get in the way of the chute that shoots out the sawdust and so you know i'm not totally happy with the log lifters and that whole thing but you know overall it's a great sawmill and you know it's still a whole lot better than what i had to do with my previous sawmill where everything was by hand so anyways that's why the log lifters are on that side sorry for taking so long to explain that but if you will buy this machine make sure that the holes on the log bunks are on this side on the side of the operator side and you won't run into that issue we could fabricate it and drill holes on this side and, and but like i said it would involve switching everything around and i'm just not at the time or the patience to do that right now so there we are i'm going to get a milling thanks again for joining us hit that like button because i know these are exciting videos and uh Let's get some sawdust flying. I think I'm changing my mind and going to do them at 10 quarter.
this piece from here to here it's about 31 inches and that's just a hair under five foot it's six foot this one but this is the way to cut some guy who's running a chainsaw didn't know what he was doing about 24 inches that way This is nice. Instead of carrying them. Oh, I spoke too soon. Ah, oh, this is nice walnut. Off the stump. About 30 inches at the top wide. And about 22, 23 wide at the bottom here. All right. 